In this video, I'm going to show you how you could use combined latest for form validations. If you're new to my channel, I'm inviting you to subscribe so that you can receive notifications on new videos that I upload in the future. I'm going to start this video with a Swift Combine refresher, and then we will head over to the Combine latest tutorial. Hi, welcome to the Swift Combine introduction. The Combine framework provides a declarative Swift API for processing values over time. If you are an experienced iOS developer, then you are familiar with delegates, which help in passing data from one section of the application to another. Combine is an alternative way of passing data from one section of the app to the other. As I was starting with learning Combine, it took some time before I understood how it truly works. But with practice, I'm happy that I understand it now. And I'm also happy that I could share what I learned with you. Regardless if you're a beginner or an experienced developer, you might be curious as to when to use the Combine framework. You typically would need to use Combine if you have a user interface that requires to be updated in real time and you need the data to be transformed from its original type to a different type. When getting started with Swift Combine, you need to be familiar with a few concepts. First, the publisher. Publishers publish the data that it receives to downstream subscribers. It is an object where you give the responsibility to talk to subscribers. Publishers are like news agencies that receive the news from their reporters. Combine provides a lot of publishers you could use out of the box while you have the option to create your own. Next, we have the operators. Operators are methods with specific functions that allow you to process the incoming data before it gets to the subscriber. It is like the proofreader or editor for a print news, or if it's a live TV broadcast where the news is directly delivered to the viewers with or without editing. Operators are optional and it is needed if you just need to do some additional data processing or transformation. Then our data is received by our subscribers. Normally subscribers are methods with closures where you can access the output value. Then finally the output value is displayed on the user interface that you assign to receive the value or another publisher that is also acting as a subscriber. Here we're looking at the just publisher. That receives an integer, which is the number 5. The Just Publisher emits the value and finishes the life cycle. As the value is moving, we have a map that allows us to do some transformation from integer to string. Then the subscriber sync method allows any receiver to consume the final data. In this quick combined introduction, I only have covered the very tip of the iceberg. Combine provides a lot of tools for developers and I encourage you to read about it online. I hope by now you already have an idea how Swift Combine works and subscribe to this channel for more Combine related videos in the future. Welcome back and I'm glad you watched the Swift Combine refresher that I prepared specifically for Swift Combine beginners but also useful for advanced developers. Right here we have in the simulator a form with six text fields. At the top, we have the submit button. The submit button right now is disabled because the form is not yet valid. If we type some text on the first field and on the second field, the submit button will be enabled, which allows us to interact with it. This is a very simple example that demonstrates state changes based on some input values. Let us head over to the project on Xcode and I will show you how the form was constructed. Our form is built within the view controller. Starting from the top, we have references to the table view, which I called form table view. The submit button is a UI bar button item embedded in the navigation bar item. We have the cell identifier, data source, and field models. The field models is a struct with reference to all six row models. This is the validation publisher, which is a type erase publisher, which expects a boolean as an output and will never produce an error. 
You might ask, why Boolean? Our form has a button that enables and disables and that state is a Boolean type. We will need to set the isEnabled property to either true or false, which is a Boolean that would be coming from the validation publisher. Even though we are receiving text input in our text fields, our validation results should be in a Boolean type. The never means we do not expect an error to be returned. Deciding when to use never or another type of error will depend on you as the developer of the solution. We also have an any cancelable set here, which I called store. We add the references of any cancelable instances, which are returned by the subscriptions. In our view did load, we set up our table view and the data source. Before I get any further, let us head over to the table view cell. The table view cell has a field model property. As soon as the field model is set, we set the text field placeholder with a field model hint. At the bottom, we have the text changed action, which is wired to the text field. With this, whenever the user is typing, this method is called and we can retrieve the text from the text field and set it in the field model value. So this is how we get the value from the text field then to the field models. Our field model is a simple data model with the hint and value properties. The ID and hashable conformance is there because it is required by the UI table view diffable data source that we're using for the table view. The value property is a string and with a property wrapper at publish. So what is a property wrapper? And what is at published? A property wrapper is like giving a property some extra powers. With at published, a publisher object is created as soon as the property is set or instantiated. It is now convenient for us to subscribe to the field model value property since it has its own publisher that we can access later like in the field validation step. Let's shift our focus on the two bind methods, bind validation and bind submit button. I have multiple versions of these methods so I can demonstrate different implementations of the bindings using combined latest. Binding is some form of coupling to objects where one or both could be the publisher or receiver. Let's talk about combined latest a little bit more. According to the combined documentation, Combined Latest is a publisher that receives and combines the latest elements from two publishers. In order for you to use Combined Latest, you will need publishers that emit the same data type. Combined Latest has three varieties. Combined Latest that expects two publishers. Combined Latest 3 expects three publishers. And Combined Latest 4 for four publishers. There's no combined latest 5, 6, or more in the framework. But we're going to be creative in handling that kind of scenario since our form has a maximum of 6 fields. If we are combining two publishers, it means we are waiting to receive two values to be emitted at the same time. For the purpose of the form validation, the validation takes place in an operator like the map operator. Since our demo application expects a string as an input, then we evaluate the string if it's empty or not. Then we use a logical and operator on these values to get the final Boolean result. For example, if one of the two is false, then the result would be false. Otherwise, if both are true, then we turn true. If we have three or four fields to validate, which combined latest will you use? In that case, we will use combined latest three and combined latest four respectively. How about if we have more than four fields to validate? Can we still use combined latest? Yes, we can still use combined latest. How? Since we have six fields to validate, we will split them into two groups so as to divide and conquer. We are going to create one combined latest three per group and then use a logical end operator to get the final boolean result. Since we have two boolean results, we can then combine the two to get the final boolean value for the entire form. We will now modify our form to validate all fields 
by using bind validation 6 and then build the app. Now I'm going to test if our form validation is working for all text fields by filling all six text fields with text. As soon as I fill the sixth field, the submit button is enabled. If I empty one of the text fields, the button toggles back to the disabled state. In the bind submit button 1 and 2 methods, you can see that we have subscribed to the validation publisher and assigned the result to the submit button. On bind submit button 2, I use the sync method to wait for the validation result and set it on the button. These two are examples on how we could assign our view model states to our view. This concludes my tutorial on how to use Swift Combine in your form validation. I hope you liked this video. Smash that subscribe button and click the bell icon for notifications.